If you have your Bible today, kindly open it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 26. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the, all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me did not prove vain. But I labored even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, so you believed. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith is also vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised. Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are all men or all men most to be pitied. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For us in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits. After that, those who are Christ are his coming. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to the God the Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. May the good Lord bless us upon the reaching of his holy word. To God be the glory. Let's give God a clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. We had a chance to visit a mountain resort together with the church ministry team. And it was a remote area. But we noticed that some of our companions were using their cell phones in communicating with their friends. And so I asked them, Meron bang cell site? Dito, 
since this is a secluded and remote area. And they told me, merong peso net. Are you familiar with that? Na maglagay ka lang ng coins and you have several minutes um, pwede kang mag um, uh, communicate with your friends through the internet and I was saying uh, paano naging possible in this uh, secluded and remote areas that uh, there is an internet connection when there is no signal from the telcos may mga lugar na kahit walang signal from the telcos that there is an internet uh, connection and the reason for that was about six years ago, uh, the internet providers were given the authority to put up their systems in secluded areas. And people there are now enjoying the internet connection. And there is another good news because very soon, I think uh, in some areas, Starlink is already in place. Pero kailangan ka lang magbayad ng, I think, uh, for the hardware, you need to pay 30000 And a monthly subscription of 2700 you have unlimited access to the internet. Kung magiging in place yan, then even when you are in the middle of the ocean, or out there in on top of the mountain, you can have an internet connection. But kung wala ka namang cell phone, wala kang gadget, wala ring silbi yung internet connection, you must have uh, a device to be able to receive the signal and also transmit your signal. And I think that's also true in the spiritual life. Because the message of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ has been preached for more than 2,000 years. At wala nang rason ang mga tao na hindi nila marinig ang minsahe na ito. In fact, if there is any message that is repeated over and over again, it is the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it is only for those who believe. The passage that we have read in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 26, as Apostle Paul mentioned here, that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ was made known only to the believers. In fact, this is a mystery to me for many years. Because Everybody saw Jesus crucified. His enemies were there. Few friends were there. In fact, it was only John and Mary who were there, left the other disciples, were not witnesses of his crucifixion. They left. They were afraid when he was arrested and when he was already tortured and he was brought to Calvary, only very few of his friends were witnesses of his crucifixion. Very few were witnesses to his burial. Yung mga close friends lang. But my question in my mind is, why did Jesus not appear to his enemies when he rose from the dead? It would have been a big news if Jesus went into the temple after he rose from the dead in broad daylight when everyone could see him. They saw him crucified. Would it not be good to let them also see him walk into the temple after he rose from the dead? I think Pilate, Herod, and the members of the Sanhedrin would have a heart attack. 
if they saw this man whom they crucified three or four days ago, whom the Roman soldiers guarded in his tomb, now marching towards the temple, it would have been a big news. But why did Jesus not appear before his enemies? I think that would be my first question if we come before him face to face. But this is what I think. I think Jesus Christ gave everyone a chance. But those who rejected him, he shut the door to them. In 33 AD, they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, the Jewish authorities used the temple as their political and religious base for their activities. And it was in the temple that they plotted against Jesus and they decided to kill an innocent man. It was in that temple. And they manipulated since the Jewish people were not given the authority to impose capital punishment. They manipulated the use pilot whom they hated. Ito talaga sa politika. Since the Jewish people cannot kill a person because the Roman authorities were there, they said they sent Jesus to Pilate. Inipit nila si Pilato, they pressured him politically, that even when the wife of Pilate said, do not touch that man because I have dreams about him. He is an innocent man. And even Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent. But the Jewish people used him to execute their evil plans inside the temple. Can you imagine the temple that was supposed to be holy, sacred, dedicated to God, was now the meeting place of evil people to kill an innocent man. But ironically, in 70 AD, the Roman Empire surrounded the city of Jerusalem burn the city of Jerusalem to the ground, burn the temple to the ground, and until today, the temple still has not been rebuilt. Jesus shut the door to the unbelievers. He appeared only to the believers. And if you hear his voice today, Consider yourself blessed because that offer is not given to everyone. Only to the believers. Only to those who have the spiritual receptor. Apostle Paul, who wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 to 26 was one of those who persecuted the church in its early stage. He was so jealous for God that he thought that this new movement was a blasphemy against his God until the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him. By God's grace, he appeared to these men. And when God appeared to Paul, Paul responded, and he who was willing to kill and destroy the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ was now totally changed. He was not willing to go anywhere, and he was willing to suffer anything for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus granted this gift to him. Jesus appeared. To him. I think it is not our task as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to prove that he rose from the dead. That's a waste of time. 
that we will use all the evidences to prove to the unbeliever that Jesus rose from the dead, don't bother. Because the unbeliever will always use an excuse. One of the common excuses the unbeliever is using is, I do not believe in God because you who claim to believe in God do not live lives consistent with Him. You know the, the fallacy of that statement? The unbelievers are using you and me, our failures and our weaknesses, that he will not believe in God. I have encountered several people, in fact, right here in this church several years ago. I was talking to a person who was only forced to come to church because I think one of the members of the family died. Kaya napilitan lang siyang pumasok sa simbahan. Nakakahiya naman na namatay yung kanyang pariente at hindi siya papasok. But when I talked to him, he said, no, I'm just here just to respect my relative. I really do not believe in your God. I said, why? He said, I saw many of your members in this church. They're out there. They come here on Sundays. They attend activities in the church, but you look at their lives. They oppress people. They abuse. They are corrupt. And my question to him is, have you seen my God? You saw people who claim to be worshiping this God. But do you know my God? What can you say about him? You have so many complaints about those who claim to follow him. But do you really know him? And he was silent. Because unbelievers will use excuses. And the excuse that is common is you and me. Meron nagsabi sa akin, Pastor, member niyo ba yung tao na yan sa church? Sabi ko, bakit? Pag tinanong ako ng ganyang question, kinakabahan talaga ako. Kasi pumasok yan sa office namin. Nagwawala doon. Galit na galit, nagmumura. Di ba member ninyo yan? Unbelievers will use you and me as an excuse that they will not believe in God. But when they are confronted with the question, what can you say about Him? Apostle Paul used to persecute the church. He thought that these people were evil, but when he was confronted with God himself, he knelt down and worshipped him, and he was willing to go anywhere to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. I was reading about the people in Iran today. I don't know if war will explode between Israel and Iran because there is so much hatred between the two countries. But someone said that the fastest growing church in the world today is in Iran. Not because evangelists went there. Not because people went there and preached the gospel. It is because thousands of Iranians receive the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ in their dreams. And when they have these dreams, they cannot keep silent. They would tell people, you know, I had a dream last night and I saw this person who came to me and revealed himself to me. And the other said, yes, I also had the same dream last night. The other night, somebody said, yes, I also saw him. And he came to me. And many people in Iran today, without even a church building like this, they would gather in open places. 
They would sit down because the police were monitoring them. But they would just sit down and silently pray. Nobody would arrest them when they pray. But they were now praying to the Lord Jesus Christ who appeared to them, who revealed himself to them. It is my prayer that here in the Philippines, as we are enjoying this freedom to gather together and worship God, we would cherish the privilege that we have received the revelation from God that indeed He is alive. He is alive in our hearts. That whatever happens, we have no fear. We have no anxiety because we know that He lives. Our Redeemer lives. And He is able to carry us through whatever happens and whatever circumstances will come into our lives. David Livingstone was a Scottish missionary to Africa. He was very young together with his wife and very small children when they went to Africa. When they arrived, immediately after their arrival in Africa, the wife and the children got sick. They were not accustomed to the climate and the conditions in Africa. And so David Livingstone sent them home. Doon na lang muna kayo. Paglaki ng mga bata, you can join me, he told his wife. If the children are grown up, you can join me here. So for many years, David Livingstone worked in Africa from village to village. He went and people were saying, David Livingstone, are you not afraid that you will die in Africa? And he said, whether I am in England or in Scotland or here in Africa, there will come a time that I will die. But I know that my Redeemer lives. And He rose from the dead and He will raise me up. Can you imagine He was alone? For many years, He was alone. And then when the children were grown up, his wife joined him. After many years, he, the wife joined him. The first day he set foot in Africa, she got sick. And later on, she died. David Livingstone continued ministering to the people in Africa. He went from one village to another. And one time, as they were walking, a large lion attacked them. His companions ran. He was left behind. He was mauled by the lion. He was wounded all over his body. Fortunately, some of his friends came back and drove the lion and he was saved. But the scars that were left in his body, he was disfigured. And he was told, David, you go home. Africa is not for you. And he said, I will continue serving God until my last breath here in Africa. Whether I live or die, I will continue serving him. Because of what happened to him every day, he had to take medications. Pain all over his body. But one day, someone stole Ninakaw yung kanyang medication. And for several days, he was in pain, but they never heard him complain. He continued to go to places, and there were times he could not walk. He asked his African friends to carry him. And they carried him from one village to another. And one day, he said, I will rest for a while. He went into a room, he knelt down, and they waited for him to come out. One hour, two hours, three hours, they peeped, he was still kneeling down. Then, it was already sundown, they look at, and he was still kneeling down. He said, hindi na ito normal, na nakaluhod ang isang tao ng ilang oras. 
So his friends went in. They touched him. Dahil kailangan na niyang kumain. And when he, they touched him, he fell down because he was already dead for several hours, kneeling down in the presence of his God. Before he died, he made an instruction to his friends that if I die, I know my family wants my body to be brought back to Scotland, but I want my heart to be buried in Africa. Today, there is a monument where the heart of Dr. David Livingstone was buried. Here is a man who encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, received the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and was never afraid to go anywhere in the world, whether he lives or dies, because he lives in the presence of his Redeemer who lives forever. To God be the glory.